My name's Ray Martin. I'm an Australian journalist, have been for more than 50 years. I spent 10 years as a foreign correspondent in America. I guess I've been to most parts of the world reporting about politics and people. I'm doing another book. This time it's a photo book on Tasmania. Writing has been my life, but I like telling stories. But my dear friend Sir David Attenborough probably said it best. If you get a chance, he said, don't do what you like, do what you love. And I love taking photographs. That's why I'm here on Bruni Island. It's a tiny teardrop of land looking towards the Antarctic. Working with the Fuji camera, the GFX, and the 23mm f4 lens, I'm here to take portraits of some of the local characters. And there's no shortage of them. The winds on Bruni can be cantankerous. The seas are often wild and woolly. They penetrate the souls of these hardy islanders. The Great Southern Ocean has been a chilly graveyard for ships and sailors and men who love to fish. The last lighthouse keeper, John Davis, is a direct descendant of the first white baby born here almost 200 years ago. And John says the local indigenous peoples were mesmerized by her. She was born on the island, but the Aborigines used to come as being a white baby, and they were fascinated by a white baby. And they'd come and gather, gather her up every now and again, cart her away for a couple of days, and bring her back. And... Weren't they really? Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. because she was white? Yeah, because of the fascination of the white. Is that right? Yeah. So what's it take to be a good lighthouse keeper? Oh, I think to be uh, quite content in your own company. You got no choice, have you? No, not really. <laughs> there wasn't much else to do. <laughs> Did you feel like you were saving lives? Yes, you know, it was pretty important in those days. Uh, you know, the, well, a lot of the fishermen relied on the light itself uh, for, so there, for navigation and their uh, knowing where, you know, just where they were. And of course, in that stage, you still, the shipping still relied on the lights. Nowadays, of course, they don't need it so much. You're an island boy, eh? Yes. <laughs> I see pictures wherever I go. It's my kind of, of art. I can't take them as well as I, as I wish I could, uh, but I'm getting better. But, but I tend to see through a lens. Um, that's just who I am. Like the tourists, the colourful seasons come and go on Bruni Island. But the cycle of life is constant, safe in the hands of people who care, like Dr Tonya Cochran. This is Bruce. He's a little orphaned wallaby. His mum was killed by a car. How old is we've he? we've had him. He's probably about nine months old now. He looks like a Bruce. Yeah, he does. I'll put him down and <laughs> okay. give him some milk. Apart from the animals and the birds, what's so special about Bruni? Bruni is an island of an island of an island. So you've got, to, you've got to make an effort to come here. And there's only 630 odd residents on Bruni. So there's not many people here. The wildlife by far outweighs the, uh, the people. So they have no predators apart from cars, no predators? No. Um, the, uh, these young ones, I reckon the eagles would take these if they weren't uh, careful. That's why we keep them fairly close to where we are when they're young like this, so it isn't until he's uh, a fair bit bigger that I would uh, let him go. I must confess I had some doubts about taking portraits here for my new book on Tasmania. With a prime lens as wide as the sky, without depending on a tripod all the time. But I quickly discovered that this 23 millimetre lens is perfect for capturing environmental portraits of the many characters who live here along with the unique character of this breathtaking place. The camera's big sensor and the Fujinon glass is so sharp, so much detail, you've got no excuse. It's amazing, simply amazing.